Thank you for staying with us on News Hub. Last week, President Bola Tinubu was in China and alongside other African leaders where uh, the Chinese government made a commitment of over 50 billion naira in funds and also in uh, military aid to African nations. Now, a lot of uh, talk has gone around what the impact of this will mean for Nigeria and other African countries as well. So today on the show, we're going to be looking at the China trip gains, analyzing the infrastructural gaps in Nigeria. That was a major talking point as well for President uh, Bola Tinubu. Uh, but before we join our guests, who joins us via Zoom, uh, Debo Wiley Johnson, policy uh, and good governance analyst, uh, who joins us via Zoom, let's take a listen to what uh, the president had to say in a recent town hall meeting with Nigerians in the diaspora. And we'll be right back. Want our children to be in good schools, not in tattered hordes and dilapidated uh, classrooms. You make teaching interesting and make business flourish. One economic action leads to another. It is in your hand to build our nation. My own is to provide the leadership that is necessary. And I'm committed to that. All right. Um, he went on and on, said a whole lot in that video, and even spoke about the uh, recent uh, debacle around the oil and gas industry, talking about fuel hike but that's not a focus for today uh adibo ali johnson policy and good governance analyst joins us via zoom adibo ali good morning to you good morning for having me thank you so much thank you so much for doing this with us this morning and now it appears that china seems to have i don't know if i should say have or is a try to have a firm grip on africa um and for good reason some people would say because of our vast uh, natural and human resources, but, but particularly when it comes to the uh, natural resources. Uh, this has come as no surprise to a lot of Nigerians, but uh, what's your overview of the president's trip to China? All right, thank you once again. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, so yes, China uh, arguably had always had a grip on Africa, um, and of course, indeed, Nigeria. Um, I know that... Uh, well, we could easily say we're heavily indebted to China and, of course, even other nations, including the United States, is own, of course, maybe worse off than us um, as to loans that have been taken or some sort of exchange of trade. Um, maybe mostly will be said to not be balanced in itself anyway. Um, but then, you know, th that this is an existing conversation. Of course, for us to be able to have more development as a nation, uh, we need to focus on infrastructural development. And in that breath, we need to look for funds. Um, but in looking for funds, we need to uh, be able to balance how we do that. But yes, if you talk about our going to China, um, I like it. it. It gives us an opportunity to be able to maybe get cheaper funds, you know, make it a lot easier hopefully cheaper, um, hopefully a lot cheaper for us to be able to engage and, you know, do the right thing. If I may read out some statistics that, you know, the Ni Nigerians must actually understand, we have a deficit of $3 trillion when it comes to infrastructure in Nigeria. Mm. $3 trillion. And so for us, for the next five years, if we must have anything significant, we need about $100 billion dollars um, for us to be able to achieve this. Um, so, you know, it is important for us to, um, you know, see this as something that is important for us to engage with. And so, yes, it's good that the president went to China. The president could as easily, you know, go to other, you know, continent or other nations. Um, but yes, this is not just only a Nigeria conversation, as African conversation. And so it's a welcome idea if it is done right. All right, I, I like I like the fact that you put that caveat there. If it is done right, 
Now, um, you, you spoke on about spoke about infrastructure, and it may seem like one of the things that took the president aback when he was in China is the level of development he saw, infrastructure development he saw in China. I mean, he 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 was marvelled at it. Um, now, talking about translating that, and he's talking about translating that into Nigeria and, of course, the West African sub-region as well. Um, speaking about doing it right, I want to get back, I want us to get back to, uh, to that. Can you expand shape? Bearing this in mind, can you expand shape on that? What do you mean when you say doing it right? We have an infrastructural deficit which we need to close. How do we get it right? Okay. So, in, in itself, we have... I, I've, I've actually structured our challenges into five. And so if we could deal with those five major elements, then we would be doing things right. Number one is eliminating corruption. It is rather almost impossible to say we want to have a zero corruption nation or a zero corrupt nation. You know, I don't know which is the right English word to use there. Hmm. Um, I'm not an English major. We get the message. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we need to eliminate corruption um, in, of course, our engagement as a nation. And this is not just only in the public sector, but also in the <laughs> private sector. But as we look at government, we also look, need to look at citizens. Number two, we then need to look at the funding constraints and when we look at funding constraints, it's not just only about government going to chase funds, but private entities. And, and, and you know, I, I'm not sure whether I said, you know, it wasn't on this platform. But I said that um, at the beginning of this administration, I had signed a sort of an, an, an MOU with a funding partner out of Europe. I think two partners actually out of Europe. And we've had access to up to $5 billion to be invested in Nigeria. Part of the conversation is that these guys don't want to come because, of course, of our insecurity issues. They don't want to come physically. But they were happy to deal with a Nigerian company that they can trust. And then this funding can be injected into the Nigerian economy for it to be developed. And then the private entity can then pay back, you know, these funds as used. So if you look at that, we as a business, that's my company, as a done some sort of public sector funding, you know, project funding of up to about five billion and that we're trying to inject into the state and of course into local government and you know arguably if the federal government is interested, we would inject. So we need to look at those funding structures. Number three, we need to look at inefficiency in project execution. Hmm. Most of what we have is that we have so many and if you look at the books of some of the states, They've taken so much loan, FDIs, that you can't see the effect of those loans, those monies taken on infrastructure development. So a, a, a state is saying, you know, they're owing maybe $100 billion, for example, $100 million, you know, FDI that are coming, but you can't see development on ground. And so you will see that there are so many projects. Um, some months ago, um, a, a project came to my table. Of course, we do project financing. And so there's this project somewhere in Ogun State in Ijebode. And I looked at it. This, the project contract was reading, I think, 2022 or thereabout. So a budget of about $800 million for a road in 2022, you now want to execute in 2024. So whoever is taking on that project now in execution is not going to be able to complete that road to the point of what it was built for yeah. two years ago right. because prices have changed so when you talk about yeah. project execution we have a lot of problems there number four the lack of private sector investment um we, we see a lot of the banks and a lot of you know institutions declare profit uh, and we don't see where those profit go to so can we have some sort of engagement that allows for businesses to take a percentage of their funds, of their profit, sorry, um, injected into some sort of project investment? So it is not free money given to federal government, but some sort of money that is invested in infrastructural development for the nation, Very which they also can cash out on. Because at the end of the day, this is good. Sorry, number three is inadequacy of policy framework. 
we have so many things that are dropping off the table because we don't have proper policies that actually guides our engagement. So strategically, we have things that are dropping off, but we're not coordinating. And so if we must go to get more money and get FDIs, we must do it right if we get those five things right. I'll come to those five things in a while, but in a moment, but let's go to what China really wanted, uh, especially while putting together this uh, year's uh, FOCAC. Uh, for those who are wondering, FOCAC is an acronym for Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, which President Bolatino was one of the African leaders that attended. China seemed very calculated. I mean, the, uh, President Xi Jinping also mentioned they had this 10 plan agenda to foster relationships with Africa. And one after the other, one thing that uh, President Xi, Xi Jinping mentioned that really caught my attention was even before I announced the 280 million uh, you know, dollar uh, I mean, investment in Africa, he mentioned something on provision of $50 billion to check insecurity in Africa. Uh, what did this mean to you when you first uh, you know, got uh, heard that? And uh, what impact do you think this could have on, especially even the Sahel region, uh, region in the country, uh, in the, in, on the continent, where we, uh, we have Boko Haram, we have others. It's no different in Libya, we have in Sudan and all over. What impact do you think this would have if indeed, as you said, the policies work across Africa? Well, um, this is when you talk about security, it's quite a deep um, conversation. And, you know, you would realize that even security experts wouldn't come on air to actually say some deep things about security. Um, so I would not be able to say too much about the depth of what I know. But I will tell you that, yes, if um, China wants to do this, we must understand that China is trying to fight. Um, a battle, um, and the, the African continent in, in its in itself will somewhat be a battleground. But it, it's China is trying to say that I want to liberate Africa, but of course is for the is for the Chinese investment in Africa. So um, we must we must understand that what China wants to do is laudable for Africa in investing heavily in security to be able to solve the problem. But we must also know that it comes with some deep challenges. So I'm particularly happy that the puppet master um, wants to be taken out of the circulation in Africa. But what I'm not, you know, what I'm careful about is that a puppet master changes um, instead of instead of eliminating a puppet master, we are now having a puppet master change. So we must be careful in signing mm -hmm. deals that helps us solve security problems, which are do internally, but there's a puppet master or puppet masters behind, you know, uh, the curtain. So we must be careful that we are not changing puppet masters, but we are truly eliminating puppet master or master. So we must be very careful. I think it, it's about the mildest way I can put the conversation around security. Yeah, All right. So I mean, it's okay. Well understood. Now let's deepen the conversations around. Uh, what we can hear and what we can see in terms of infrastructure development in Nigeria, in other parts of Africa watching us right now, there's hardly any African country that does not have an existing or ongoing project being put together, being executed by the Chinese company. And if anybody's buried right now still thinks the Chinese firms are different from the from China itself, I'm sure that the ongoing rift between the Ogun State government and the Chinese company will tell you otherwise. Back to the issue, many people don't really see this China-Africa relations as being mutually beneficial. Uh, they feel like with, when it comes to a country as China investing so much money uh, into a continent's affairs, it is for a reason. You mentioned the battleground. Africa remains the beautiful bride that other, I mean, the big players in world politics are looking for. What do you see? Is it more about true bilateral relations with individual African countries or, I mean, generally uh, befriending a bloc or much more? Okay, so let, let me put it this way. Um, imagine that I have a business. Um, let, let's even just put it as, okay, I have an agricultural business. I want to set up um, a 10 million naira agric investment. Um, let's say somewhere in a kitty, for example. 
and then I call on you and I say, hey, come and invest. For you, your investment must yield return, of course, on your investment. You must have returns. Um, for me, as, of course, the person who is bringing this opportunity to you must then be able to say that whatever I'm offering you must be mutually beneficial. Or on the other side, at least um, if I'm going to be generating return on investment, let's say 50% of that amount of money, then I should be able to offer you 20%, knowing that at least I still owe 30%, or at best 25 so that we share equally. But when you come to me to say, I'm going to give you this 10 million, and I'm going to take 40% from you, from me, then it means that I will be the one at loss, because then I will be working for you. Now, what we must learn in that equation is that um, it is important for us, and I trust, and, 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 and I say this with all sense of humility, that I trust that the team that Mr. President uh, um, I went with, and all the governors and you know, consultants, I believe, that went with, the, with, with Mr. President, um, I'd gone in and looked at those contracts and looked at those documents very critically. And there are lawyers who have done such transactions and I've read and read and read line by line, you know, elements of those contracts before signing. Because we are not going to be, we're not, we're not children to believe that China will come and invest heavily in Africa and China is going to be losing the money. No, it's not possible. So clearly, China would make gains out of their investment in Africa. The problem is that are we Africans investing in Africa? That's the problem. That's the question that is most important. We have funds, we have monies that we're getting out of our resources, but the problem is mismanagement. So yes, China is going to make you know, good return on their investment. And beyond making money, they are the global power. Whether we like it or not, the US is heavily indebted to China as much as the rest of the world is. And so whether we like it or not, and we say because they don't have the firepower to, to, for, for military or for defense, please don't let us even wait for another world war before we want to find out that. So the best of what we can do is that we need to look inward as Africans. And this is not just only about calling on Nigeria, but of course right. the entire continent of Africa. All right, Adibo Ali, we'll be rounding up now, but we need to get your pause on this. How soon? Do you think this is going to work? You know, Tucker, because uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, particularly um, just last a few days ago in an interview, stated that more Chinese firms will be coming into Nigeria. Um, how soon do you think this will happen um, as we round up? Okay, so I, I've, not, I've not seen, and I'm not sure I will ever be able to see <laughs> the contract that was signed. So I can't say mm. um, a couple dates and you know time, you know timelines. But I believe that it should be, if it's done right. Again, that's the clause. It should be immediately. The essence, and I will tell you, is that there are many Chinese companies in Nigeria already existing, and of course, all of those companies, just like my dear sister said, are owned by China as 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 a nation. So mm. they're already existing in the country. How be it, maybe some are illegal, but again, that's another conversation on its own. So if we're yeah. going to have more coming in, we, it, that's, that's not a problem. What the, the problem there is that what are we signing to when we bring those Chinese companies into Nigeria? Are we bringing them in to develop, train, and transfer? Or we're mm. telling them to come in and come and own our motherland? that is the foundation and that should be the questions we should ask there's nothing wrong in for them to come to build train and transfer you know those technologies to us but if they are coming and they're going to hold grounds here in nigeria um we should be careful because if we're not you know we've already started seeing the signs and you know season of airplanes and and the likes and all of that can be very dangerous for us as a nation and of course even as an African continent, as, as a whole. All right, Adibali, as much as I am tempted to continue this conversation, because when you answer a question, you open the door for more questions. But we'll just put an end to it here and hope that uh, maybe in the not too distant future, we'll have you back on the program again. Thank you so much, Adibali Johnson, a policy and good governance analyst, for joining us on the program today.